for the armchair traveler. <laughs> These oh, are yeah. like to be a, a, like an afternoon escape or maybe with a history bend. I picked, there's a, actually a second edition of Atlas Obscura, um, which they also like have kind of a famous website. They also have uh, books and Atlas Obscura, if you're not familiar with it, is they just find the weirdest, I want to say the SH word, in the world and write, take deep dives into it. And it's just fascinating. And especially now when travel is discouraged, it's just the kind of thing that you can dip into, take a brief deep dive into something you've never heard of in your whole snake in life. And, mm -hmm. and it just can like reset you. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, reading, it's, yeah, it's like hitting the reset button. So anyway, very cool great gift because they're big and cool looking and yeah so yeah that would be a great gift if you get it for me <laughs> <laughs> all right so the book that i'm going to recommend is good for i you know for an armchair traveler but also someone who um, when it's you know safe to do so again um to travel um it's by a very well-known travel publisher lonely planet it's their ultimate travel list book so they have taken um and created a list of 500 sort of must-see places all over the world. Um, and then also then narrowed that down to their top 10. And it's not just, um, you know, sort of like well-known uh, places. It's a little bit, I don't know if it's quite as obscure as the ones that Rhoda was talking about, but they do um, get into some lesser known um, sites that they feel are you know, certainly worth visiting. Um, so it's a great list for those, or a great book, a great book, not a great list, um, for people who plan on traveling, but because it also includes some really wonderful photography and write-ups, I think it would be really good for an armchair traveler as well. So I have Ms. Josepha to thank for this recommendation. I had heard of this book, but I kind of forgot about it. Um, and she's right, this is the perfect armchair traveler book. Um, for Outlander fans specifically, um, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish, who of course both starred in Outlander, um, they came out with a book recently called Clanlands. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically just a hilarious road trip through Scotland. Um, so they explore the land, the histor history, um, culture, whiskey. Um, <laughs> they're friends in real life too, so there's a lot of banter and you kind of get that camaraderie um, between them really coming through. Um, I know they visit several locations that were significant to the series, um, so that would be interesting as well. Um, it just sounds like a really, really fun book. It does. Um, perfect way to escape to the Highlands right now. Mm -hmm. um, and bonus, this isn't related to armchair traveling, but when I was looking this book, looking at this book online, um, there's apparently an Outlander knitting book so the next time you're binging Outlander, you could be making like Claire's- Knitting a kilt? A shawl? The, the, um, oh, I had a picture on my computer. In the first season, Claire wears this like yeah. gathering cape yeah. that, yeah, you can make that. You can make Jamie's overcoat in, from one of the seasons. So, you know, something else to do. Bonus. <laughs> Instead of eating, it. sounds like a plan. Yeah, but Planlands check it out. The book that I picked is a fiction book um, called The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. Um, this was such a nice escapist read. I read it, um, I think it was really, really cold outside and I just remember being like curled up and it was just, it felt cozy and it felt like I was transported to the setting. Um, so this book follows World War II, um, so it's, it's post World War II and it's the small town of Chawton. And they are really needing to heal from more than just the wounds of war. There's a lot of kind of unrest in the village. It's really where the town people, as well as the visitors, can find a, kind of find solace um, in the pages of Jane Austen's books, because that's where she was kind of from um, at, at later on in her life. So that's their like claim to fame. It's just this kind of tiny little town. And 
they have this one big author that's from there and a lot of people are drawn there by that. Um, so they try to play into that and try to kind of bring people in. And the visitors that come there kind of help the town heal and help heal themselves. And they all kind of find a way to move forward after the war. So um, it's just a really endearing kind of read. It's gentle and the relationships are really well done. And it was well written. I really liked it. I concur. <laughs> oh, did you read it? I did. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I read it a few months ago. Yeah, it was cute. For the people person. I like this category. The book I picked for this is called The Best of Me by David Sedaris. And uh, I love his ass. I love his sister. I love his whole family. I feel like I, I wondered, like, would I really want this book since I have read every single book he has ever written? But in reviews I have read, it made me realize I do want to read this because it's like visiting with an old hilarious friend. He's, he's just great. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to Gus getting me this for Christmas Gus, <laughs> um, so that I can revisit this family that I have, I feel like I've grown up with. All right. So the book that I picked is a memoir. Um, we're a, a running family. Our house um, hold is running. And so I, I tend to pick these kinds of books up. I look for um things about running. But anyway, um, so this one was a little bit different than what I've typically read. Uh, but I think it's a book that anybody, uh, you know, obviously someone who likes biographies in general, but um, sports or inspirational life stories. Um, so it's Can't Nothing Bring Me Down. Um, and it's the story of Miss Ida Keeling. Um, she is currently 105 years old. The book's, I think, a year or two old. Um, but she holds several world records. Um, for her age divisions. Like she didn't even start running until she was in her 60s. So she, you know, lived through the depression and the civil rights era. Um, she had four children. Her oldest two sons were actually on two separate incidences within a couple years of each other, brutally murdered, um, unsolved murders. Um, and she was kind of just hanging on there. And one of her daughters approached her and told her that she had signed her up for a race. And this is again, when she's in her sixties. Um, and she just was like, all right. And she trained for a couple of days, ran the race and she was hooked. And, um, I think it was a 5k, the first one that she did. Um, she still runs today. She works with a trainer. She's just fun and feisty. Um, you know, she's sort of an icon in the Bronx where she lives. Um, but it was just very inspirational to see that, you know, she lived through so much um, and didn't let her, didn't let it bring her down. Um, so I would recommend Can't Nothing Bring Me Down for a biography for someone that likes running, like I said, or just wants a good inspirational story. So I feel like my book is kind of, I don't want to say the opposite of that, but you may have to alter how you view the, the phrase people person. Um, I have this book here. It looks, I have not read it entirely, but I flipped through it and it just looks really fun if you're into true crime. Um, it's called The Last Book on the Left, Stories of Murder and Mayhem from History's Most Notorious Serial Killers. Woohoo! Um, so it's actually written by the creators of the podcast of the same name, The Last Book on the Left, which they focus on all things horror, supernatural. Um, They've been described as morbidly humorous. So you have to have a certain sense of humor, I think, to enjoy this book um, and definitely an interest in true crime. But I just think it's a really, really fun book. The um, illustrations are really cool. Like, let's see, I think it opens with Ted Bundy. He likes <laughs> Um, And you'll see, um, they're just really fun. You'll see, these are the creators. They'll kind of pop up with banter and various commentary throughout the book. Um, I don't know, nice glossy pages, perfect for a gift. Um, it's just kind of fun if, if you're into that sort of thing. So I would recommend this as a book. Um, and I also have an honorable mention. I'm gonna slip this one in there, I'm sorry. Um, Alex Trebek's memoir. Um, if you're a fan of Jeopardy, I know for me, Jeopardy's been a staple since I was a kid. Um, 
and I recently read his memoir and um, it was really interesting to me. It's about his life, it's about Jeopardy. Um, he has kind of a dry sense of humor too. So if you know a fan of Jeopardy, um, consider buying that book for them as well. That was good too. My suggestion for this category is a book that I could not put down. Um, it's technically a teen title, but I think adults should definitely read it. Um, it was so good. So well done. It's called Warhead, the true story of one teen who almost saved the world by Jeff Hennigson. Um, it's going to sound really weird. It's <laughs> brain cancer, the cold war and deep seated family drama, but it's hilarious. I don't know how he does it. Um, <laughs> it's really like, those are very heavy, dark topics, but um it's so compulsively readable and his experience he he writes like you're sitting there talking to him and he's just telling you about this crazy experience that he had after he was diagnosed with brain cancer as a teenager and the S starlight foundation they offer to grant him a wish because his prognosis is pretty dire um so this is all set like in the 80s so i i should mention that um <laughs> and he decides because he has kind of a strained relationship with his father and he wants to gain his father's approval. Um, he decides that he's going to use his wish to travel to Russia to address Mikhail Gorbachev and try to broker peace between the nations. And that will kind of win him his father's approval. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I laugh because it's just so, it, the way it's done is just so amazing. He does get to go to Russia. Um, he talks about his experience. It's, he, he talks about first love and how that kind of shaped him too. He talks about disease and grief and growing up and oh my gosh, it's just so good. <laughs> so cool. if, you, if you're interested, like it's this really interesting combination of like the eighties and the cold war and just a lot of emotion, but he handles it with such humor and grace that I think anybody who likes reading about people, especially this point in history, I think they would really enjoy it. So our next category are books for those who do what makes them happy. I, one thing that over the, the time that we were away from work um, and I was trying to get outside and walk around a lot, um, I really started like looking at birds. So the book I'm gonna recommend the Bird Way by Jennifer Ackerman. Um, there's also a, a David Sibley book that's similar to this. And it's just sort of a, like a, a deeper dive into more than just like, you know, this is their song and this is how they fly. It's like why they act the way they do. I mean, and, and that's, I, I like things like that. I, I like, that book about trees that I like so much, The uh, Hidden Life of Trees or whatever. It's that kind of a deep dive into something that you didn't think you could take a deep dive into. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so I'm super excited about my suggestion in this category because I really liked this book. I think I blabbered to everybody about it when I read it. Um, and I think it's a book that you definitely could come back to. Like I'm already thinking maybe I should be rereading it. Um, but it's called Every Tool is a Hammer, Life is What You Make It by Adam Savage. and if you're not familiar, Adam Savage is on Mythbusters, um, but he's also a super creative maker um, and he has been his entire life. So the book really is part biography. Um, so it tells his life story through you know different projects and things he's done over the years. Um, and he is all actually like admittedly slightly obsessive about his making. Um, he's been known to make like dozens of prototypes until something is exactly the way he wants it. There was a piece of, um, I think it was like a piece of some sort of armor that he was trying to replicate from a movie scene. And he literally, I don't know how many takes he had on it, but, um, but it's also part inspirational. So he, there's a lot of encouragement and a lot of like, don't, don't wait for the right time to start a project and just you know you don't need permission to be creative and i think it could apply to not just makers like him but anybody who has sort of any kind of creative passions um 
every tool is a hammer. The title just comes from the fact that like you just, you use what you have kind of attitude. So anyway, super fun book. Um, and he's entertaining too. Um, and it's, it is scattered. There is some practical advice sort of scattered throughout the book about different methods and tools and techniques and things like that. But, um, Anyway, really liked it. Very inspirational, entertaining, super fun. Every tool's a hammer. I've got um, a book that takes its time, An Unhurried Adventure in Creative Mindfulness. Um, you may have seen this book before. It came out a few years ago, and this is actually our library's copy. It's been pretty popular. Um, it essentially just encourages creativity and you know, being present in the moment. So there are different prompts and exercises and activities. Um, there are recipes, little mini essays. There's um, the joy of one thing at a time. I love, there's just little Aww. fun fun things. How have I, I missed this word. book? There's Is postcards. Out, what? Is it always checked out? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, gosh, there's a section on practicing hand lettering. So if you're into like bullet journaling, um, I don't know. I think this will be, this would be fun. I, I like the stuff that comes with it. Like a pop-up book for adults. There about you go. mindfulness and creativity. So yeah, check it out. It looks fun. It'd be a good gift. My pick is inspired by the fact that I think like so many other people during quarantine, you kind of became like a plant person or you baked bread. <laughs> like it seems like that was kind of where the activities fell. Um, and I belong to the plant people. <laughs> um, my in-laws gave me some plants and I set them out on my balcony and I watched them grow and it was such a spot of joy in what seemed really dark. <laughs> And I chose the book, Plant Magic, Herbalism in Real Life by Christine Buckley, um, because it really inspired me to learn more about the different herbs that I was growing. Like I had um, uh, mint and basil, and I'm, I'm trying parsley now. <laughs> so um, it's just really fun to learn more about how they grow and how they adapt and what they do. Like I never knew mint, like, could be so swampy. Like I would overwater the crap out of that thing and it would still survive. In fact, it flourished. <laughs> so um, it's really, it's really great. It's a great, excellent resource to learn more about how to incorporate herbs into your life, whether it's through growing them, pruning them, or using them. So, and it comes with really beautiful pictures and it's really easy to understand. So I really like that book. Our final category for the adult <laughs> is for the hip history buffs. Now, let me say it again. For the history buffs. <laughs> um, okay, I have to give a shout out to Josepha because she mentioned that this would have been her pick. And then also to my husband, who is truly a history buff. Um, and the book I'm going to suggest, if that your history buff doesn't already have it, is, uh, oh wait, is it Wolf? It's the Wolf Hall Trilogy by Hilary Mantel. And the, the um, hang on, I got to grab the title of the, the last book in the trilogy is called The Mirror and the Light. And uh, just my husband devoured the, these books. And then also he's gone back and reread them because there's so much there there. Um, and so, that, yeah, perfect. Just don't even listen to these guys. Just get that. You'll be good. All right, mm -hmm. go ahead. So I actually picked a um, nonfiction book for this category. So it is by Sean Quimby and it is the Margaret Bork White Moments in History. So it is somewhat of a coffee table book, but I thought it would be a really nice gift book. Um, I think for an aspiring photographer, someone interested in women's history or just history in general. Um, so she did most of her well-known work in the 30s and 40s. She was the first female war correspondent um, to cover, to be, you know, right down in there in the trenches with the, the forces. Um, so the book is 150 photos of her work during the 30s and 40s, um, you know, over in Italy and Germany and Czechoslovakia. Um, so I think it would be, again, an excellent gift for a photographer, um, 
someone interested in history or, um, yeah, Margaret Bork White. I thought the book um, Sapiens, it doesn't sound very exciting um, when you think about it, but there's, um, so this book came out several years ago. It was a bestseller. It was called Sapiens. Um, it sort of outlined the history of humanity. Um, there were, I guess, like six sort of original human type creatures on the planet and it talks about how we're the ones that survived and um just our humans role throughout history the rise of empires evolution um and i really i love graphic novels and i really love that they're adapting this so this is actually the first volume um, of what's going to be a series of the original book um, it was recommended by lots of important people, um, Barack Obama, Bill Gates. Um, oh. You know, it's, yeah, big deal. You know, it's going to be good. But the illustrations look really cool. Um, and I think, again, it might not sound very interesting, but I wish I could show you these images I'm seeing online. Um, just, just look it up. It, it looks really fascinating. It looks um, very accessible, easy to understand. Um, there might be some humor in there. Um, yeah, I think anyone who's interested in history, of course, but science, philosophy, humanity, um, check it out. It looks pretty good. The book that I'm recommending is another nonfiction title. It's 80 Days, Nellie Bly and Elizabeth Bislin's History Making Race Around the World. Um, this was a really, really good book. I read this a few years ago and I kind of can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> it kind of pops up in my brain every now and then. I think Nellie Bly is such an amazing person. If you don't know anything about her, she, her claim to fame is that she was the first female investigative reporter. Um, she did a, like, a, a expose on, um, asylums and how they treated women. Um, Oh gosh. But I mean, she, she started her early work was for the Pittsburgh dispatch, which I'm from outside of Pittsburgh. So <laughs> got to put that in there. 1887. Well, sorry. Late 1800s. Oh, uh, late 1800s. Okay. Yep. Um, so she had 10 days in a madhouse where she kind of explored the treatment of women um, but this book actually was inspired by the book Around the World in 80 Days, and her thought was that she would try to travel around the world in 80 days or less than 80 days, um, taking the path that was kind of laid out in the book. Um, she sets out on her journey because that was kind of her, her hook to kind of get back into journalism um, because as a woman, she was kind of being pushed out. So that was her hook, and she sets off on her journey, and then another woman, Elizabeth Brisland, um, actually took off in the opposite direction and tried to beat her. Um, so it kind of became this like sensation and the book follows both of them in their travels. Um, it takes actually pieces from like diaries and journal entries and all kinds of stuff. So um, it was a really, really good book. It was really fast paced. It's, it's a bigger book, but it doesn't feel like a, a long book because it's so engaging. Like it's, it's very narrative. I felt, I felt I really enjoyed it too. Oh, sorry. And they took off from opposite sorry. coasts. That was, I think, one of the parts of the book, one from the east and one from the west coast. So Yeah, and traveled. Traveled, and traveled. Yeah, opposite directions. 